Wesley, good morning to everyone, and welcome once again to another edition of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Today's guest menu is loaded. Coming up first, in a matter of minutes, the Commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Dr. Charles McClellan. He'll join me very, very shortly. Following Dr. McClellan will be Dr. Travian Scott. Carter, WZDX, Fox 54 in Huntsville. He'll join me to start hour number two. And then following Mo Carter will be Charles Edmund of the All Corn State Radio Network will join me. Uh, We'll be getting your input as well. So with that being said, going to take a quick time out. And when I come back, I'm scheduled a visit with Dr. Charles McClellan the commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. I present to you three of the fiercest subjects ever assembled in the cage of doom. First, the brain-wrenching behemoth, Algebra 2, weighing in at a mind-boggling 800 pounds. Foreign languages! The multilingual international sensation capable of tossing you clear across the Atlantic. And finally, biology. More ferocious than formaldehyde, she'll dissect you one chromosome at a time. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Me too. I'm in. Sign me up. Take on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. Find out which classes you need at knowhowtogo.org. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation for Education, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. He's the commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Dr. Charles McClellan joins me right now. Dr. McClellan, good morning to you. Good morning, Mr. Carlos Brown. It's a pleasure to be here, sir. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, You are probably one of the hardest working uh, commissioners (laughs) that I've seen, and I'm sure you are going to continue to be busy as now the SWAC announces the addition of Bethune Cookman as a full member in 2021. Um, Dr. Cole, just kind of talk about uh, the process of Bethune Cookman coming on as a uh, full member of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. They went out and conducted their study. And I'll start off by saying I've seen and heard a lot of people saying Bethune Cookman is tied to Florida A&M. Once Florida A&M came, mm-hmm. you know, Bethune was was destined to come. And you know, I'm not quite sure that Bethune came just because Sam U came, but the fact that Sam U did come to the SWAC and it extended that footprint, it made the SWAC look more attractive to Bethune Cookman at that particular time. Uh, if you look at the interviews that Dr. Lynn Thompson has talked about, you know, all of the schools are looking at who they are, where they are within the landscape, and they did the same thing. When Florida A&M decided to come to the Southwestern Athletic Conference, that's when that initial contact from Bethune Cookman came to say, hey, you know, are you or will you be interested in Bethune Cookman if we decide to make the move? It was a pretty rapid move given where they were and where we are. And I know that the deadline to notify the MEAC was the 1st of July, or they would have had to pay an additional exit fee. And I think if anything, the Florida A&M move did was it made Bethune Cookman move a little bit more expeditiously in their strategic thought and their planning, because if they could come with Florida A&M, it would be a great synergy. 
But we gave them all of our data that they requested. They plugged it into their data. They did their analysis and said, hey, we think there will be a great fit. A lot of the narrative from Florida A&M was, you know, travel, travel, travel. Daytona is about three hours, three and a half hours, depending on how you drive, Carlos. Three for me, maybe three and a half for you. Uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, easy. Yeah, so uh, the travel incentive for Bethune was not as great uh, as it was for Florida a and But what Bethune will do is coming in, it now puts us in true divisions. So from all of our Olympic sports, uh, you don't necessarily have to go past the Mississippi River. So where Prairie View and Texas Southern was having to go all the way to Alabama to play some of the Olympic sports, they won't have to do that now and vice versa. So there's going to be significant travel savings, not only for Bethune, Cookman and Florida a and it's going to be travel savings for those schools, uh, for all schools, for, you know, for that, Alabama won't have to go to Texas. The schools that probably will get the least financial benefit will be those schools kind of in that small circle between, you know, that Mississippi River line, which would include Southern, Grambling, Alcorn, Jackson State. Valley, but they still will get some uh, travel incentive. From a football's perspective, again, why it was important for Bethune Cookman, it now puts six teams in the East, six teams in the West, and those four recent teams won't have to go every year. Because you'll have three games that you'll have to play in the cross division, there's three games that you don't have to play. So once we do our scheduling and we will we will be strategic about it we won't have to send texas to florida every year we won't have to send texas to alabama every year there is one model out there where we can send them once every four years with the home and away so again we can reduce travel from a football's perspective and we can even reduce travel from a basketball perspective because you're going to have to play now um when you look at basketball, adding Bethune and Florida A&M, that will make it 22 conference games. You can't play 22 conference games. The max that you can play is 20. We're at 18 now. We'll have to decide whether we stay at 18 or 20. So you'll play every – you'll play your division teams. Although we won't be divisions, we'll, you'll play the teams closest to you uh, home and away. And then you'll go to the teams farther from you, and you'll play them home one year and away another year but it will still leave two teams that you can do a home and away. So that gives us flexibility not to break up any rivalries. So if there's a rivalry there and it's in cross division, it still will allow you to do your home and away every year. So we did some modeling and we have a pretty solid model to reduce travel. And once that happened, I think Bethune was convinced, our council was convinced, our membership were convinced. And the brand that Bethune is bringing in uh, it was a natural fit. So one of the biggest challenges we had to work through were, uh, was the travel component. Uh, once we got that work through, then, you know, it was exciting to be able to welcome Bethune Cookman in. Visiting with Dr. McKellum, uh, Commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And, and Dr. McClellan, I, I know, uh, at least I think I know, um, you do get in, involved somewhat uh, with social media. And, and that's kind of, when this story broke kind of some of the concerns um, on social media, some that I personally talked to, they were talking about the uh, the travel concerns as far as uh, Bethune Cookman, of course, coming in the conference, but, um, and, and you kind of just explained it, but from, you know, the Texas schools going to Florida and, and the Florida going to uh, the, the Texas schools, And then in basketball, did I, did I hear you right? It, it, it's not going to be, divisions in basketball and um what about baseball the baseball we will go to division so all olympic sports will be division other um other the only separation like when i say olympic sports i'm i'm grouping everything in one bucket yeah. other than basketball and football basketball and football are not olympic sports everything else will be division uh so you won't Texas Southern won't have to go any, you know, further than uh, the Mississippi River, as well as Florida won't have to go any further east than the Mississippi River in every sport other than basketball and football. In the sport of basketball, you're going to play those further 
farthest teams once. So, for example, and we're using extreme models, but this will be the same for Arkansas at Pine Bluff as well. Uh, Prairie View will go play Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman in year one, and that will be it. In year two, Bethune-Cookman okay. and Florida A&M will come to Houston. So they won't have to do that trip uh, home and away each year. So it will significantly reduce travel. Got you. Got you, Dr. McClellan. Also, um, I heard you mention in other interviews about uh, Bethune Cookman and their academic and financial situation. And there was concerns about that. But you said Bethune Cookman, they're a good fit even from an academic uh, aside as far as coming in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Can you talk a little bit about that? I, definitely. The one thing that I will tell you, Carlos, is if they don't get their accreditation, there is no more Bethune Cookman, so there's nothing to even talk about, right? So if mm-hmm. a member institution doesn't have an accreditation, then there's not a member institution. The majority of the issues that they were dealing with were financial. They've been written into the Florida legislature to get a lump sum of money to take care of that. We were able to look at their accreditation uh, issues, and quite frankly, we feel that they have them taken care of. Uh, to take a step back, uh, I would say any member of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, all 10 of our schools, if we judge somebody based upon being on academic probation with their accrediting agency, none of us will be a part of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. That's just a part of the challenges that we have to deal with being limited resource schools. Each and every one of our member institutions have had uh, academic issues. Just because you have accreditation issue doesn't mean that you're not a strong academic institution. Um, I come from uh, two member institutions, uh, Prairie View and Texas Southern, that have dealt with accreditation issues. We were able to get those issues correct and we're going to move on. And I would begin to argue that sometime over the next 100 years, each of those schools are going to have some issues with accreditation. That is the reason why the accrediting bodies are there, to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And if you don't do it, then you get that letter to give you incentives to get them taken care of. But then Cookman comes in with a heck of a nursing program. It comes in with a heck of a business program. It comes in with a heck of an engineering program. They even have a hospitality management program. They have graduated, stellar graduates, you know, for forever that have made significant contributions. So uh, from an athletic standpoint, uh, their football team and baseball team and basketball team, they are a great fit uh, for uh, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. All 17 of their sports are great fits. We'll let the academicians take care of the accreditation issues, which we looked at, and we have zero concern uh, that that's not going to be taken care of. But to exclude Bethune-Cookman, uh, from the Southwestern Athletic Conference because they have had to satisfy the accrediting body uh, issues and get them corrected would have been hypocritical for us to do because each of our 10 member institutions have had to go through the same thing. Visiting with Dr. Charles McClellan, the commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, discussing Bethune Cookman, now the 12th member of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Yeah, now, Carlos, let's talk about the good things about Bethune Cookman coming in. You've touched on all of the negatives. Let's get to the, the positive, uh, the, the games, the brand, the bands, uh, what they bring. Uh, we're excited about that opportunity to be able to host Bethune. Yeah, well, I, I was going to get to that. Um, you know, I just had to put it out there, just what people are thinking. And um, as far as the whole conversation, so. I know another conversation that has been had is conference realignment and brand, uh, the television contract. Will you be able to now go back and renegotiate that? And then who's moving to the West? I'm sure you've answered that question already uh, at least a hundred times and perhaps a hundred (laughs) more. You'll have to answer it. But conference realignment, who's moving to the West? What will be the procedure to determine that? Yeah, as far as contracts are concerned, you know, we will definitely be going back to our television partners. I said this in another interview. I think ESPN is is probably one of the lucky ones in this deal. There's another five years remaining on that contract. We'll be going back to them, asking them 
you know, hopefully to renegotiate. It's not to their advantage to do so. Uh, but we understand the significant increase in branding that FAMU and Bethune has brought to the Southwestern Athletic Conference. So our stick is a little bit bigger when it comes to the negotiating table. We understand that and we can, we can push back now. So we're excited. We've seen an uptick in uh, sponsorships, uh, potential sponsorships. Obviously, COVID-19 kind of has us at a level to where uh, people are cautious but optimistic. We've seen the branding of Sam, you and Bethune coming in with the already 10 existing strong brands, uh, showing that sponsors are wanting to get in with us. So they're going to allow us to increase our overall value and our overall network. So we're excited about that aspect of Bethune coming in as well. Who goes to the Western Division? I don't know. We talked about we want to hear from the fans as well. I'll be instructing. Uh, Andrew Roberts to put up some fan polls so we can see who the fans would like to go to the Western Division. Obviously, there are three schools that are most likely to be a part of that process. Those are the three Mississippi schools, Mississippi Valley State, which has Pine Bluff as a travel partner already, Jackson State, which has Gremlin as a travel partner already, and Alcorn State, which has Southern University as a travel partner. So we'll look at various. Um, scenarios. I can tell you we want to make sure that travel is a significant piece of that. We want to be able to maintain all of the rivalries that those schools have. And then the third piece of it will be competitive equity. But I'm not quite sure how much competitive equity will go into the equation. With the addition of the addition of Bethune, Cookman and Florida AM, it's going to be pretty tough across the board. And if you think you got an upper hand on this sport, there's going to be another sport that that you probably want. So uh, it's going to be exciting, and I think it's going to be fun in order for us to be able to to make those things happen. Adam McClellan, could I could I answer in that poll? Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> can, can I can I answer right now who I would like to see? Just just yeah, being a, pure motion. Yeah, being a southern person, I'm assuming all corn is your vote. But go ahead. Uh, that is correct. Bring yes, them in the west. I, see. I don't run away from competition, you know. Yes, sir. It could be easy to say bring in Valley because, oh, okay, Mississippi Valley, but they're up and coming as well. No, bring in Alcorn State. Okay, I got thanks you. for allowing me to say that, Dr. McClellan. <laughs> I, I got you. Hey, I'm, I'm writing notes down now, Carlos. <laughs> and then geographically, you know, again, they're actually much closer to Southern than Grambling State University. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But But, I could um, make an argument that uh, they might be closer, but Jackson is the quickest to both Gremlin and Southern because they can get on 20 and 55. Mm, And you know how I feel about Jackson State. Uh, (laughs) But but again, that's the the value. Regardless of who you put over there, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a rivalry. And you know, it's going to be a large fan base. So, but again, I, you know, we'll get back with the membership. We want to hear from the coaches. We want to hear from, you know, the fans, the athletic directors, the senior women's administrators, the presidents, everybody's going to have opportunity to, to chime in. Yeah. Well, people are chiming in now. I'm getting messages. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it's interesting. Um, someone wanted to know about, can some arrangements be explored to allow for more air travel and then the celebration bowl future air travel as in city jet which is one of our uh, corporate sponsors i think the short answer to that is yes we already have that mechanism in place so if for those we announced city jet last year uh, we'll have to see how they fare in this pandemic but we do have a charter airline company that's a uh, corporate sponsor of the southwestern athletic conference that gives discounted air charter flights to our member institutions. <laughs> and I'll caveat that by saying you got to do it in a timely fashion. We had some that think that because we had the charter jet, we could call them up pretty quickly. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. There are things involved in getting that discounted rate, including uh, booking it early like it is at regular commercial airlines. But short answer is yes, uh, we do have the ability. But we do think the way that we can structure the divisions in the Olympic sports and then how we play each other uh, in uh, football and basketball, that the, the distance piece 
is going to be significantly reduced, therefore making charter travel even more affordable because you don't have to go to Alabama, let's say, from Texas multiple times for multiple sports. We, we will eliminate that, and you realistically will be going, you know, two times, at most three times a year in all of your sports. Yeah, and, and yeah, you addressed the, uh, the concerns by some about, how, you know, the effect on uh, travel. But Dr. McClellan, the potential of all of this and, and good things happening, I mean, you have the Florida Classic, the Bayou Classic, State Fair Classic, Southern Heritage, and then you still have championship uh, games, uh, football. And, and some people have uh, want to know, will it still be on the, uh, on campus? What SWAC football championship as of now and then in the future, will there be some movement about where that championship game will be played? Well, I think one of the interesting and intriguing uh, components of both FAMU and Bethune looking at the Southwestern Athletic Conference is that championship game. Mm-hmm. And who would have known when we made the decision to move it on campus, it would thrust us into the national spotlight. And, you know, we did have God shining on us to have Southern and Alcorn being that close and such tough rivalries where we had, you know, packed stands where one year we were three or four thousand less than the Pac-12 championship on the same day, and last year I think we were seven or eight thousand less than the Pac-12 championship. That puts us in a different spotlight, and teams want to be a part of that. And the significant piece of that was moving it and allowing um, for it to be on campus, and the ability for those member institutions to be able to gain in that revenue. Uh, and, and I say gain, Alcorn was able to keep the majority of the revenue minus expenses. So I don't see that uh, changing. Uh, the one thing that the Council of Presidents have told me, if somebody comes in and makes us an offer we can't refuse, uh, then they would be willing to move it. I asked them what that number, and they said, you'll know it when you hear it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you know. A million dollars is not that number. Somebody's going to have to come in and really take away because when you look at the economic impact of not only the game, uh, but what it brings to the community. And Carlos, I know you're based out of uh, Baton Rouge. Let's just take Southern, for instance. Southern can fit 30,000 in their uh, stadium, a little over 30,000. They can fit another 30,000 on the grounds where they're, they're, you know, coming up with parking. It's a SWAC championship game, so yep. there are no season tickets. There are no free tickets. Obviously, you know, there's a minimal amount that you have to give and you have to reserve that for bands. But let's just say you took 2,000 seats out of the equation and your average ticket price is going to be $40. You know, you could have a $15 seat and you could have a $60 seat. I think the average ticket price at Alcorn State was somewhere around $38, $39 with their seating. Uh, structure at Southern University, thirty thousand times four, three times four, and my calculation is twelve. That's one point two million. Plus, if you're charging ten dollars a car and you have another ten thousand cars, you know you, you're you're adding another hundred grand plus concessions plus whatever sponsorship deals you have. You quickly begin to see how economically viable that football game is. Let's just say it went to Jackson State. Let's say it's a Jackson State Southern uh, championship game. Uh, that game probably would put 50, 60,000 in. You do those numbers, right? It exponentially just goes up. So uh, the model for the championship game was, was something that we thought would be able to give some un- unexpected revenue to the member institutions. And it quite frankly worked out that way. So I don't see us making any hard decisions about moving or changing our model unless somebody comes in and really pays us what that game is worth. And I've said that time and time again. We now know what our value is. We know what our worth is, and we're not going to take anything less. And, Dr. McClellan, that would be, in in my opinion, a selling point that FAMU and Bethune-Cookman put in their equation as far as, you know, looking for a, a new conference home, that championship game and the potential yeah. income. Yeah. It absolutely it was to be able to, um, and, and again, I know FAMU is a, a, they had all of their information out there, but Thune didn't necessarily 
uh, have to do that. But from a family use perspective, that was a significant piece of their uh, rationale of being able to move the additional revenue generating opportunities, not just the, uh, you know, the robberies that they're getting ready to pick up in the, in the fan base 42 of the last 43 years leading FCS. It was the opportunity that we have a, you know, close to a 30,000 seat. We, you know, we add standing room only, you know, and we could potentially keep that revenue. You know, that championship game has revitalized football within the Southwestern Athletic Conference from a standpoint of eyes coming in and the excitement of us being able to host those games. It, it gave us so much energy and a significant piece as to why both FAMU and Bethune Cooking looked at the Southwestern Athletic Conference versus other conferences. Visiting with Dr. Charles McCall, uh, the commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Now with everything that's going on, uh, Dr. McClellan, I, I would think now that you're still going to have the eyes of uh, college sports looking at the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Question is, in the future, in the present, does this conference continue to look at a situation where maybe they can expand even further? Well, geographical footprint uh, is important. And like I said, Carlos, see, that would have been a good time for you to take that, that first question and merge it right here. Then you would have had a, a, a clear delineation of questions. See, I thought you were trying to set me up there at the beginning. I, I hear you in the background, Mike. You were trying to set me up in the early on. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he was setting me up. My reputation is not fair <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, he, he was trying to set me up, Mike. So here we go. I appreciate, I appreciate that question there, Carlos. I'm, I knew you would, uh, would try, yeah. attempt to answer it. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. So the expansion piece really has a significant uh, impact on geographical footprint. We knew that Bethune Cookman was probably as far east as we could go. There were some social media reports out there. I know you said I'm, I'm heavy in social media. I'm kind of one of those sneaky social media people. You, you, I don't have a Facebook. I don't have a Twitter account, but I'm on everybody's Facebook and Twitter, right? That's the you get the, the information. Social, that's the best type of social media person. <laughs> They'll never be able to say I saw Charles in my in my DM because I don't have it, but I know how to get in. So we knew that uh, there was information out there that, you know, they were looking at South Carolina State and, uh, you know, going. We never looked at uh, South Carolina State or North Carolina or Virginia or any of those states because, again, that footprint was significantly important to us. When you added Florida and m Bethune Cookman quickly showed up on our radar because of the proximity. If you're going to Florida, you might as well hit both of them. Uh, there were other schools that people were saying. I heard people say, I, and matter of fact, I got tons and tons of emails. And that's the that's how I can gauge how passionate our fans are and how interested our fans are. For them to take time out and email me to say, hey, we would like for you to look at this school. I had them saying, look at Langston, look at Lincoln in Missouri, right? They were all over the map. And quite frankly, there were a couple of things that we had to look at as far as schools that were going to be able to fit within what we wanted um, as far as member coming from. Geographical footprint was obviously extremely important their ability to be able to come in our conference and, and compete. So let's talk about that for a second. When you look at division two institutions, let's just take the best division two institution that's out there uh, from a standpoint. They are half of, from a financial standpoint, of what it takes in order to come into the Southwestern Athletic Conference and compete. Right. So if you're dominating in football, you're at 36 scholarships where you're going to have to double that to be able to come in the Southwest Athletic Conference and play. So you could be dominant in your area now, but when you have to play week in and week out, and you know, it's one thing to play a Division One, a FCS, a SWAC school as a Division Two. You up for that game, but when you have to prepare week in and week out, that is not a formula that you can sustain without the requisite resources 
to be able to do it. And we just didn't want a football program. We wanted an entire athletic program to join our already outstanding 10 member institutions and our 10 out, outstanding athletic program. So when you start to say you got to have the resources and in this COVID-19 era, schools are going to start contracting uh, because of the COVID-19. So the three to four to five to six million dollars a year you're going to have to put in to increase your budget to be able to join this now highly competitive conference. It just wasn't viable. So, you know, schools start to shrink very quickly. Uh, when you put those parameters in. So I say that I will never say never. I don't know what the future holds, but it is not our intent to expand past the 12 for the foreseeable future. Interesting. Well, that will clear up any misinformation or dialogue that, and, and you know, Charles, fans, alums, and supporters, they're going to always have those, those conversations because, I mean, you you heard a plethora of universities that were supposedly coming into to the conference, or then some fans gave their, like you said, input on who should come. But at the end of the day, you're at uh, 12 right now, FAMU and, and Bethune-Cookman as members of the uh, Southwestern Athletic uh, Conference. And Charles, it does, and I'll get your opinion on this, it does have or make you wonder and have some type of feelings about the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And um, wh- what do you think uh, the conference will be like in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, if, if, if you can talk about it? Uh, they're going to be strong. I had opportunity to look at the press conference uh, that Commissioner Thomas and the president from Howard uh, did yesterday. I stayed up to uh, about midnight watching it. And I know that they have a strategic plan. They have mm-hmm. brought in a, a consulting firm and, you know, they will be good. Dennis Thomas built all of this. He is the godfather. He is the commissioner that put all of this together. When you talk about Celebration Bowl, you know, he had to bring the MEAC to the table. It took a dynamic leader to get those schools to decide to come to the Celebration Bowl. And I think he said time and time again, all of the schools that have left the MEAC, they're leaving the MEAC because of what MEAC did for them. They brought them into the MEAC, they built them up and made them who they were today. And I don't think you heard Bethune Cookman or Sam, you not give him credit for that. So he's an architect. He knows what he's doing. And I have complete confidence and trust in him uh, to do so. Uh, MEAC isn't going anywhere. Celebration Bowl isn't going anywhere. The MEAC Swag Challenge isn't going anywhere. And I said this, and I, I have been so sincere about this. Mm-hmm. Dennis Thomas reached his hand out to me uh, when I became commissioner. We talked. Uh, we obviously have had conversations through uh, this transition. And, you know, I told him, you know, as excited as I am to get family and Bethune Cookman, I'm equally saddened to know that they're, you know, um, leaving the MEAC. And, you know, my wife says, Charles, you know, you can't get angry about this. But, you know, I hear people report and say, well, the SWAT went out and got family and Bethune Cookman. That wasn't the case. Uh, Bethune looked at where they needed to be. Family looked at where they needed to be. I didn't go and I didn't poach any schools, but as my wife told me, you know, there's nothing that you can do about what people say. So, you know, I can't be out there with the narrative, well, we didn't go after them. It doesn't matter. They're within the Southwestern Athletic Conference. But I say all of that to say, I will do any and everything that I possibly can to help and assist the MEAC. And if that means that we have to do some different things within the Southwestern Athletic Conference with games and scheduling or whatever the case might be, you know, I'm locked in step with the MEAC because a strong MEAC makes a strong SWAC. That is our sister conference. Those teams over there are our competitors. And I think at the end of the day, the only thing this move will do is make that rivalry even more intense when we step out on the football field and the other fields of play. Well, Charles, as I uh, see you on many other platforms, 
You're still looking good from a physical standpoint because you're going to be a busy guy. You're going to get to travel between Texas and Florida now. But for that to be done, you're the guy who can uh, to, who can get it done. So, Charles, from me to you, appreciate all what you're doing uh, for the Southwestern Athletic Conference, college athletics. And quickly, talk about your staff because – a lot of people don't mention them, but you got to have a great team, and, and and you have a great team at the Southwestern Athletic Conference. No, no, first time in my career that I was able to handpick people that I wanted to be able to come work with me. When you're at a institution of higher education such as Prairie View and Texas Southern, you do get do get the opportunity to bring your own people in, but not all at one time. And I had that distinct opportunity at the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And, you know, I probably hurt many schools because I went out and I got what, at least what I thought were the best out there within our conference. And I brought Jason Cable in as a senior associate. And I said this again in, in another interview. I might be getting the credit, Carlos, but it's not me. It's everybody that has put it together. Jason Cable, you know, has been tremendous throughout this, this process. And, you know, I've leaned on Jason more than I've leaned on anybody ever in my career. Uh, he is smart. He's articulate. Uh, I, I tell you this, and not to turn uh, the conversation, but the deal that I made with Jason Cable, he wanted to be an athletic director within the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And I said, Jason, come give me two years. And, you know, I think that you'll get enough experience to where you'll be able to go out and get one of those jobs. You know, it's two years now. And I went to him. I said, Jason, you know, I said, uh, give me give me three years and I get you ready. He said, no, you said two. I said, no, I said three. Then he said, no, I got it written down here. You said two. I was like, I can't lose you. <laughs> so there were some opportunities that popped up. And, you know, I reluctantly I called to give a recommendation, but I went to him. I said, Jason, we got to, we got to work a deal out. And Jason came back and said, you know, this job is more fulfilling than what I could ever imagine. Charles, let's continue going down this road and fulfilling the goal because not only are we helping one school, we're helping 10 schools. So Jason has been a tremendous asset. There's no doubt in my mind that he's going to be an athletic director. My fear is that somebody is going to come get him sooner than than later, and that's going to be a problem for me. I think I kind of stumbled upon this one, Carlos. I'm very, uh, as I was described once, Mike Prince, when I was at um, Prairie A&M University by the old trainer, John Mays, he said I was squeezed a little off of a nickel. That was a <laughs> very funny way of calling me cheap. And, now, uh, for the record, now hold on. For the record, you said that. I don't want you to come back and say it. I said that now. Right, well, you, you definitely <laughs> bullied me. You and Doc Mays. I put both of y'all in the same. But, that, that, you know, Mike, that's a sly way of calling me all kind of dirty names. Uh, oh, and boy. from I've an accounting standpoint. Economically conscious, sir. Yeah, okay. That's the same thing. <laughs> that's the same thing. Squeezing a buffalo off of a milk. But I'm I'm very, very um, compassionate about finances, right? And I hired Aaron Mackey, which was the auditor that audited me when I was at Texas Southern. He was a third party independent auditor. And I really needed an accountant because when I came in, it was midstream. We had somebody there that was temporary. And I asked Aaron to come because I knew that he had a good handle on the audit. He had a good handle on finances, but I wasn't quite sure if he was going to be a fit. It turned out uh, to be an outstanding move. Uh, he is just as cheap as I am, Mike. So to have two cheap people looking at the books, we've been able to turn this thing around financially. He was probably uh, one of the best hires that I made, and I was – probably as unsure about Aaron as I've been about anybody, but he is a staple to what we do. And we have Adina Pooler from an academic standpoint that we brought from Texas Southern University. She actually came from South Carolina State. She'd been with me all 10 years that I was at Texas Southern University. She's over internal operations. I brought Andrew Roberts with me uh, from a standpoint of doing media relations. We actually kept 
Jasmine Quinn over championships that was already there in the conference office. And we've made a couple of other hires uh, within the office, Johns Westbrook and the media relations standpoint. We have a very robust internship program. If you intern with us, you're actually going to be doing work. It's not one of those where you're filing. So our office staff is small, Carlos, but they are empowered. And we did that. We didn't want a large staff. I wanted to pay them a fair rate and double up the work on them. So you're doing the work with two people, but we're going to pay you well. They've embraced it. And they have allowed me to go out and do some of the political things that I need to do, not having to worry about what's going on in the office. And even when I need things to be able to convince FAMU that this is the right place, convince Bethune this is the right place, to convince the sponsors that this is the right opportunity, they have been there. So without them, Carlos, and I know people say that all the time, but, you know, very realistic. Without them, none of the moves that we've been able to make, they would have been done. They would not have been accomplished. Yeah, I, I can understand that. It, it's a team effort. And I know that cliche is said a lot, but it, it is really uh, the truth. Uh, Dr. McClellan, I appreciate the time. We could go on, I'm sure, much longer, but respectful of your time. Appreciate you coming on the Carlos Brown Show. And, um, uh, Let's see if we can talk again real soon. Anytime, Carlos. All right, I'm still in good graces, huh? Okay. Oh, no, you've been, on the Charles, you've been on the Charles McClellan team ever since I was at Prairie View. But, you know, you, you open up with them two tough questions, and you got to spread them out. You, know, you can't ask all of them. You got to spread them out through the interview. Well, you know, I, I, I just wanted to bring up the concerns that, was talked about and you you addressed it. So yes, sir. that's that's the way you gotta do it. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, you you're you're a class act and you know I was just just joining well, you. You're a class act as you've always been. And I think the one thing that I have always said, in good times and in bad times, I will always address the issues. And we knew that there were concerns from a travel yeah. standpoint, uh, for Bethune and we knew that there were some concerns from an accreditation standpoint. But you know, we checked off all of those boxes and Bethune was a was a great fit for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And they will enhance our brand. They will enhance what we're doing. And quite frankly, they have now created a super black college football conference, a super college basketball conference, a super uh, black college baseball conference, all the way down to all 18 sports. We are a super conference because from and, and I'm gonna sign off with this, Carlos. You say, mm-hmm. why are you a super conference? And I'm not saying this from a boastful standpoint. I'm saying we are a super conference because if you start in the state of Texas, they are two Division One major black colleges. That's Texas Southern and Prairie View. They are in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. In the state of Arkansas, there's one Division One major black college school. That's Arkansas at Pine Bluff. In the state of Louisiana, there are two, Southern University and Gramlin State. In the state of Mississippi, there's three, Mississippi Valley State, Jackson State, Alcorn. In the state of Alabama, there are two, Alabama A&M, Alabama State. And now in the state of Florida, there are two, Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman. And what do they all have in common? They are all a part of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. So when you have all of the major black college schools in the states from Texas all the way to Florida, that makes you a super conference. And I'm just proud to be commissioner. Yeah. And I'll close on this one. 2021, SWAC Football Media Day, Basketball Media Day, all of the coaches and the personalities now coming into the conference, boy, I can't wait. Yes, sir. It's going to be good. It's going to be that, good. On that note, Dr. McClellan, appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your busy weekend, and we'll talk again real soon. Thank you, Carlos. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. Dr. Okay. Charles McClellan, Commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, joined us here on the Carlos Brown Show. Going to take a quick time out, a little bit past June, but when I come back, I'm going to visit with Dr. Travian Scott, Deputy Athletic Director at Southern University and Chief, 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 let me get that right, Chief Operating 
officer. He joins me next on the Coles Brown Show. I'll be right back. Hello, this is Alonzo Hardy Jr., the president of the SWAC Alumni Association. The SWAC Alumni Association is an organization founded on December 10, 1999, at the Sheraton Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Its mission is to serve as a rallying ground for individuals who have made the Southwestern Athletic Conference the illustrious conference that it is today. Its membership is open to former student athletes who played in the conference in any sport, as well as to coaches, athletic administrators, staff members, game officials, and fans. Annually, the association holds a Legends Awards and Roast Banquet or Luncheon where it honors individuals with Lifetime Achievement Awards, a Chuck Prophet Wacken Master Award, and occasionally a Distinguished Service Award. Proceeds from that event help to finance degree completion scholarships for student athletes who have exhausted their playing eligibility at SWAC universities but who may still need an extra semester or two to complete their college studies. For more information on the SWAC Alumni Association or to get information on becoming a member, you can send correspondence to SWAC Alumni Association, 875 Miller Creek Lane, Newport News, Virginia, 23602. The email address is SWAC Alumni Association at yahoo.com. The birth of legends are storied in this conference. We must never forget our rich history. We now turn our gaze to the future. The new legends will emerge. New heroes to arise. The Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be our history. Heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Next guest, Dr. Travian Scott, Deputy Athletic Director at Southern University and Chief Operating Officer. Dr. Scott, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How's everybody doing? I'm doing outstanding. How about yourself? You know what? Not bad. Uh, you know, just trying to gear up and work through all of this uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, Stuff and you know, trying to prepare and lay out a uh, game plan for our game day operation for our student athletes to return, and you know, for the Jaguar Nation to hopefully come out and, and, and watch us and cheer us on to a championship. So, uh, you know, albeit uncomfortable, uh, we're still pressing and moving forward toward bringing our student athletes back and preparing them for competition. And speaking of that, how, you know, how tough has it been? I know you have a team working with you and you know the work must get done but how tough has it been trying to execute a plan that's just ever changing you know what the 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 toughest part is the uncertainty of it all Uh, Mm -hmm. i think you know as a major athletic organization one of the things we pride ourselves on is being able to uh, uh prepare ourselves um for anything and so you know, we knew in March that we would have the opportunity uh, uh, to, to, to be able to kind of move forward, but that we weren't going to be able to predict exactly the, the wins, the wheres, and the whys. And so we knew that. And, and that's a part of athletics and higher education in general anyway. So, you know, we were, we were prepared for that. We're, we're, the only thing that we can't uh, or that we're, we're really going to uh, have to take into account moving forward is, you know, it's a constant uncertainty uh, of where this COVID-19 pandemic is taking us. So, um, I'm looking now, and I mean, you can see worldwide we're, we're, we're at about a half a million deaths. I think we're somewhere around 125 uh, deaths in the United States uh, as of right now. And I think uh, over the course of the past 24 to 48 hours, Texas and Florida has the most cases that they've ever had uh, over the course of, of their time period. So, you know, having institutions in those uh, states that uh, are on our schedule, um, you know, it, 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 it causes us to be able to, you know, to be a, a, that more that much more versatile uh, when planning and getting ready to to, to move our, our athletic department forward in light of the COVID nineteen pandemic. And, and and speaking of that and COVID nineteen and uh, being flexible and uncertainty, uh, this past weekend, if you can um, 
speak on this, I, I would definitely appreciate it. Uh, as much information as you can give us. Um, the revised Southern University football schedule, of course, originally it was going to be Tennessee State and Detroit, and then FAMU at home. Of course, those two games are not going to happen. And for the FAMU game, which was going to be at Mumford Stadium, was it one of the reasons being that the game was uh, canceled is because of the social distancing that will have to take place in A.W. Mumford Stadium, um, the health or safety concerns as well, and was there a economic piece involved in in, in Southern's decision to to not play that game? Well, I think I think it's a little bit of both. I think uh, from the standpoint, and, and I'll address Detroit first. Um, you know, just again, kind of going over and, and being vigilant about what's going on nationwide uh, in regards to the to the coronavirus and the COVID nineteen pandemic. We knew uh, very early on that Detroit uh, was a hotspot. Uh, obviously, those those areas with uh, heavy African American populations over a certain uh, age demographic. So we kind of knew that. Uh, we're experiencing that, you know, 65, 70 miles down the road uh, in the greater New Orleans area. So we knew that, you know, we would be hard pressed to maybe um, have the opportunity to go to Detroit. Uh, I've worked with those promoters now for the the, the better part of a year and a half, two years now. Uh, We've had conversations myself, um, um, the old AD at at, uh, Tennessee State as well as as the new. Um, And we've had those opportunities to, to really have and try to drill down into what was best uh, for not just uh, the, the the organizers of the Detroit Football Classic, but what was what was best for the hate, the health, the safety, and the welfare of the student athletes at Southern University and Tennessee State University. Um, and so at that point, it w- really wasn't in the best interest health wise. Now, um, obviously, if, if if you've got you know promoters involved and things of that nature, there's a certain revenue expectation and component uh, uh, that 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 they're going to take a look at as far as revenue projections and forecasting and all of the things that we do finance wise. Um, in, in business. And so, you know, just from them looking at it uh, from all aspects and us looking at it merely from a, a health, safety, and, and, and student athlete welfare standpoint, uh, uh, we elected to move forward uh, without playing that game. As, 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 as it relates to Florida a and um, it was much of the same. Uh, obviously, you know, when you start to talk about um, not playing a Tennessee State game, that certainly affects, uh, you know, uh, players' return dates and return to play and Again, the health and safety, not just from a COVID-19 standpoint, but also from uh, a strength and conditioning standpoint for your student athletes. So uh, what we're trying to avoid now and trying to ensure that we move uh, in a delicate fashion, especially for our football student athletes who are, who are contact uh, heavy on every play, is, is to avoid the soft tissue injury and to really make sure that when we bring our student athletes back, um, that we can provide them uh, the regular nutrition, that we can provide them the adequate strength and conditioning, um, and that we can really move forward with having an, a, 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 a robust plan uh, to be able to test and monitor uh, uh, any and all facets of COVID-19, whether that be temperature checks, uh, whether that be uh, uh, trying to determine how we're going to social distance within the residence hall areas to, to, to ensure that uh, we'll be able to, uh, in, our, in our cafeteria facility, make sure that we can provide them the proper nutrition uh, while while operating in 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 you know the COVID nineteen uh, method of operation, so social distancing in the cafeteria, and then really being able to take those things um, and, and sort of infuse them into uh, a return to play scenario that doesn't put them in harm's way from a physical standpoint. And so uh, with that, and I think you pointed out the obvious as it relates to um, uh, having the social distancing in place for uh, contests like a Florida and them. Obviously, we went down there last year and and set a record for attendance and have an opportunity to bring them here, that quite frankly wasn't going to happen. Um, but that was a small part uh, of the pie. I think, you know, before you look at any time trying to generate revenues, you have to be cognizant of what you're doing in terms of the health, safety, and welfare of the members of your organization. And, you know, that's going to begin and end with me. Um, and, and I'll speak to A.D. Banks here as well uh, with the health and safety of our student athletes, with the health and, and safety and welfare uh, of our staff who service our student athletes, our athletic trainers, our strength and conditioning staff, our student trainers, uh, our physicians, um, and so our coaches. And so we want to make sure that, you know, of course, we can have all of those ducks in a row uh, prior to moving forward. And week three for us, 
was the, the likely scenario. Um, I think it puts us at a bit of a competitive disadvantage with Alabama A&M, uh, who I think is going to have a pretty good uh, team this year. Uh, we'll have a game or two under their belt. I'm working with Coach Odoms right now on trying to figure out creative ways for us to be able uh, uh, to, 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 to hit, as, as he would say, to hit somebody in a different color jersey. And so we're working on all of those things. But, you know, in the meantime, again, just trying to move forward, we felt like week three was the best opportunity for all of the reasons uh, that I've stated before. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, we've got, a, you know, a 10-game opportunity. Uh, we, we, even though we lost the Florida a m contest, uh, we've been able, for some of the same reasons I spoke of for the Detroit Football Classic, uh, we've been able now to, to bring the Texas, a, uh, the Texas Southern content, excuse me, back on our campus away from uh, Dallas. And so uh, we, we're still going to have the, 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 the same amount of home content that we would have had uh, had we had family on our campus. And, you know, our coaches, our staff, our student athletes and our administration are excited about the opportunity. Uh, we're prepared for it and we're ready to get the season on the road. And uh, by the way, we're visiting with the doctor. Travian Scott, uh, Deputy Athletic Director and uh, Chief uh, Operating Officer at uh, Southern University. Um, I've kind of been looking at some information with, you know, teams in the conference and for us with the social distancing going on now. And the stadium capacity, of course, will be uh, not at 100 percent. Is that a, a factor as well from a financial standpoint? And what is A.W. Mumford's um, capacity now in this pandemic? So um, I'll address uh, your latter question first. Um, the capacity overall is about 25,000 uh, uh, people. I've actually been a part of the uh, Southern University family for quite a long time. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, you know, as, as long as I can remember, maybe about three or four, maybe even five times where uh, we've had fire marshals in place and we were up to 30,000. And so uh, with the 25,000, uh, if, if I wanted to take one person in social distance, one, six feet from every person, we would end up probably south of 3,000 feet. Um, right now, state capacity, uh, federal guidelines are, are, have us right about 50% at state capacity. I hope, uh, especially starting week three, is that we're somewhere uh, between uh, 50 and, and 75% uh, during game one. I believe that's Jackson State and A.W. Muffet on September 26th. But what we're looking at is just to be able to come up with some creative ways uh, to social distance uh, in a group setting. And so uh, I'll give you an example. If my wife and, and, and our two boys want to go to a game, obviously we live in a home together. Uh, so social distancing requirements for us shouldn't be one-to-one. -one. It should be uh, where we, we're all able to sit together and social distance from there. So we, we're looking at uh, every model, uh, anywhere from one person social distancing all the way up to six. Uh, we have some projections in place all the way up to eight. So. Uh, it's going to be somewhere between six and eight people possibly social distancing and really being able to maximize and capitalize on the game experience in spite of uh, what's going on with, with the pandemic. And, you know, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, but I think the, the, the more and more uh, opportunity that we take to really, really stay at home, to really be vigilant uh, with what we're doing when we're moving about uh, these different municipalities, uh, but that, that's going to enable us later on down the line to be able to enjoy some of the comforts in life uh, that, that, we've, that we've come known uh, to enjoy, especially in the South where football is king. And so uh, just encouraging everybody, you know, to, to, to move. If you're going to move, move with your mask on. Uh, if, if you're going to go, uh, stay away from large groups. Uh, and give us the opportunity and give the state of Louisiana uh, an opportunity to really recover so that when we get to September, we've got the opportunity now to, to be able to have large groups, but have them in a way that allows and calls for social distancing across the board. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to playing this season, um, but we want to do it, you know, again, with the health mm -hmm. and safety of all involved in mind. Well, you guys, when I say you guys, I've had Coach Banks on uh, several times. And this is your second time, in, and you guys have been consistent. Safety health and safety for the student athletes and employees. You've been consistent with that. And uh, I just want to make note of that uh, uh, again, because I know there is a financial piece, but um, in this pandemic, it is just a, a lot of uncertainties, but I'll move on to the certainties. Now, uh, Dr. Scott, kind of get your perspective and thoughts on uh, some of the other big news that have, uh, going on. I, I'm, I'm going to come to future schedules, but I kind of want to get your thoughts on 
the two new members. I didn't get a chance to ask you that. Sam, you and Bethune Cookman, and, and 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 what are you, you guys, meaning administration, halfway department, what do you kind of think about what has taken place? Well, I, I think uh, uh, first and foremost, I think, um, uh, and I kind of joked with you guys before we came on the air uh, mm-hmm. about coming on after Dr. McClellan. He's done, he's do a great deal uh, of kudos for for his transformative leadership and what he's been able to display in his staff. I'm quite familiar with uh, Jason Cable and Jasmine Quinn and Adina Pooler and, and what they bring to the SWEC office has been phenomenal. And so uh, when you've got that type of innovative and transformation, transformational leadership in place, uh, good things are going to happen. And so I've watched uh, and, and have been a real fan and studied Dr. McClellan now for a while uh, from the days um, at Prairie View A&M uh, on to, to Texas Southern. I've had the opportunity uh, to attend SWEC meetings uh, during during A.D. Banks' term as interim when he still had his responsibilities as a basketball coach and, and really, really wanted to uh, be a student of what was going on, especially at the conference level uh, for me. Um, and, 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 and he's nothing short of phenomenal in terms uh, of his business acumen, uh, in terms of, for, of him being able to move around and, and understand the political landscape uh, of HBCU sports and HBCU higher education administration. Uh, his ability to, to be able to fight, point, uh, fight, forecast and understand finances and, and his visionary leadership has been tremendous. And so uh, from the standpoint of, 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 of Florida a and and Bethune-Cookman, I think it's going to be an exciting time. I think for us uh, and all other mem- member institutions, uh, we kind of pull from their states as it relates to being able to recruit uh, as they are recruiting hotbed. Alabama is a, a recruiting hotbed, uh, as is Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas. And so um, having that opportunity, uh, they have great leadership. Courtney Gauthier and I uh, uh, have become uh, a, a good friend uh, over the course of his tenure, uh, coming into Florida a and University in December. Um, and Lynn Thompson, again, is, is somebody that I kind of lean on and look up to in terms of his leadership ability and the things that he's been able to do uh, uh, from a leadership standpoint at Bethune-Cookman. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be something that I think uh, I, I know we like to talk about football, but I think it's going to be uh, something that's going to benefit us across the board. Uh, in our Olympic sports, I look for basketball uh, to be ultra competitive. Uh, they've got pretty good programs there. We're doing some things conference-wise uh, uh, that are going to be great uh, from the basketball landscape on, on both sides. I think uh, baseball is going to definitely take a step forward. I think uh, Florida a has got a great baseball program, as does Bethune Cookman. And we know what we have on our side with Southern and Texas Southern and uh, Alabama State. And so uh, you start putting those things together. And, and I, I heard that the commissioner referenced the term super conference. When you mm-hmm. start talking about a super conference, you're going to have folks nationwide that are, that are going to take notice to what we're doing. And we're going to have an opportunity as a league and as individual institutions to really do some special things with our platform, uh, whether that be uh, uh, in, 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 in reference to being able to update and, 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 and do some special things with the student athlete and enhance the student athlete experience. Uh, whether that be to attract uh, corporate sponsors and corporate partnerships and entities that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do uh, with being able to cover such a large landmass uh, in two of the largest uh, uh, states, rather, in the United States and Texas and Florida and understanding how that extension now represents uh, uh, being able to encompass Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana, what that means uh, for, for a corporation and understanding what that does for a fan base. Uh, many HBCUs have fan bases all across the South. We, Florida University has alums, and our, our largest alumni bases are in Texas, Florida, uh, 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 Georgia, and, of course, uh, Louisiana. Now, Georgia, we don't have an institution in Georgia, but if you go back and you gauge uh, uh, the member institutions, the, the Florida schools, the Texas schools, the, the Arkansas institution, the Louisiana institution, Mississippi and Alabama, uh, you pretty much, even though you don't have an institution in the Atlanta area in the Georgia market, that representation now has, has even taken over the state of Georgia, and we don't even have an institution there. So um, I think it's really going to be exciting. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, for me, as, as, as a person responsible for football and football scheduling and all of the things that comes along with football, it makes my job easier uh, because I'm, it, it's almost like you're playing a game guarantee every week now. So, you know, we can really be creative and start to do some different things with, you know, the two or three games that we have scheduling-wise. and. Uh, again, be able to create even more interesting uh, game day opportunities for our student athletes, for our fans, uh, for our administration, and, and for the many stakeholders that we have. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I didn't 
get into a little bit more with uh, Dr. McClellan uh, about the eight-game football conference schedule going forward, but I did hear him on other platforms, um, you know, talking about a 5-3 kind of format. With that being said, and you just said it, it makes it a little bit easier, uh, makes it easier for a future football schedule. Now, I, I, I had Banks on, Coach, Coach Banks on, hmm, well, it was maybe four months ago, uh, four or five months ago, and, and he said at, at that time that he wanted to come back and talk about the 2021 schedule. So I'll, I'll put this to you, um, uh, Dr. Scott. In what direction are you looking at as far as uh, non-conference games in 2021 and be, be, beyond? Do you kind of have an idea that the, the direction you want to go? Yeah, I, I think the 2021 schedule now um, is pretty much done. Um, the only thing I'm waiting on is is uh, uh, for us, and, and that'll take place probably in December as we move toward the sweat meetings and start bringing on the new institutions on what the schedule and model is going to look like mm-hmm. uh, moving forward. Uh, in terms of, of, of guarantees or whatever games we're going to play pre-conference, uh, we've already released, and I think Troy has already released that information. We're going to go to Troy State on September 4th of 2021 and from there yeah. um, I'm going to wait until uh, we've got a scheduling model to see what we, what we need to do in terms of scheduling that last country. Uh, that may be, you know, it may be bringing an institution uh, in the league who may not be on our schedule. That, that may be something, maybe a, a, a non-conference conference game. Uh, and so, you know, it, it really, again, keeps us flexible uh, from a revenue standpoint. It makes us more viable, uh, puts us in a position where we may be, I would not have to uh, uh, play more of the, 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 the $600,000, $700,000, $850,000 guarantee games. puts us in a position now where we can put our institutions to the forefront um, and we can now become a driver for the institutions, missions, visions, and goals. And, and by that, I mean uh, really being able to use uh, uh, that front porch theory. And, and, and by that, I mean, and, and we've always used the quote, and I think sometimes we've, over, we've overused it, Sometimes I don't think we've used it in its proper context, but, but Dean Smith had a quote. He said, athletics is to a university what a front porch is to a home. And everybody loves to use that quote, but they don't finish it. It says it's the most visible, but it's not the most important. And so being able to play those games on your campus now uh, uh, builds a stage and a platform from every other facet of your institution uh, to be noticed. Uh, it, it, it'll help with admissions and to be able to drive, uh, you know, the many other areas that we have on campus. Uh, we've got a robust engineering program and nursing and business and, and some of those things now could now become uh, uh, can take their rightful place now in terms of being able to be uh, the stalwarts of the institution that they are. Uh, you know, when you have a Jackson State on the Southern campus and a Southern on a FAMS campus and a FAM uh, on a Prairie View's campus and a Prairie View on Bethune's campus and a Bethune on Alabama State campus, it heightens uh, those institutions and gives them an opportunity uh, to get all the more explo- exposure. Uh, and that's an example, um, you know, with, with the Bayou Classic, with the Florida Classic, uh, with the Magic City Classic, with the Labor Day Classic. You know, it gives now the opportunity for us uh, to have those games or, or games that are similar to those two or three times a year, whether they be home or away. I, I think really they're insignificant. But whether having those games on your campuses would do more for these institutions uh, than, than, than otherwise not. And so I'm very happy, very proud. Uh, to represent uh, an institution, especially now that we're moving forward with the new membership. Um, and, and, and I'm just ecstatic to see how it's going to benefit these institutions moving forward. Yeah, Dr. Scott, I'm going to admit, you, you, you had me smiling here. You can't see me, but uh, those guarantee games, that's all people that have known me over the years know how I feel about guarantee games and how many you have to play. And, and, and I always said, I understand why they they have these type of games, but I I don't necessarily like them. But that's just m- my uh, uh, opinion. But um, that that made me smile because I think you choose and pick when you can get you you have those type of games, and it looks like you have opportunity now to have more of a geographical schedule, if all possible, for your non conference games and. Even in if you if you play 
those kind of games, you, you, I think you can, you know, look at in the state of Louisiana or close by instead of, you know, having to travel for our, for a big guarantee. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And that, that that's the uh, alum part coming out. <laughs> <laughs> about the 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 schedules and trying to have them more home friendly. More games at home, the better. Yeah, and, and that, you know what, and, that, and that's our goal. Um, obviously, you know, sometimes as a schedule maker, you know, we we make, you know, I make the game schedule. I try to do it five years in advance, and you know, uh, we've had now the opportunity. We, we're going to have five home games this year. Um, you know, we've had the opportunity and we set the goal to try and get at least five home games every year. Um, and it's the first time we've done it now, I believe, since 2013, maybe even 2014. Um, and we look for that to become the norm, uh, to be able to have five home games on a regular basis, uh, to be able to, uh, while we can't, uh, certainly don't have any control over what the conference does in terms of scheduling, uh, we have input. But, you know, to really get those games uh, far enough in advance now that we know what we're doing in terms of, 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 of membership and, and really have a model now to where, you know, I can go in 2026 and say, okay, we've got uh, uh, four home games, conference home games, and we've got four on the road. So what, what we're looking at in terms of uh, 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 out-of-conference schedule, do we want to take a guarantee? Do we want to bring in maybe NAIA or do we want to do something with a MEAC school home at home? Do we, You know, it, it opens up. Uh, you know, so many options uh, to be able to, to, to schedule. You know, if it's a year where, you know, we maybe predict revenue will be down because of the opponent, you know, what do you do? Do you go and, and seek a higher guarantee? Do you go and play a winnable game? And all of those different elements um, uh, fall into our philosophy, as well as, uh, you know, we, we try to uh, align uh, the way we schedule uh, our road games with Coach Odom's tank of gas recruiting philosophy. And so it gives him an opportunity now to be able to, to leverage uh, his team being able to go on the road and, and, and play in, in municipalities and cities where we recruit uh, heavily. And so a Houston, a Dallas, a Fort Worth, uh, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, a Nashville, Tennessee, uh, 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 Tallahassee, Florida, where we, we, we've gotten some of our better players over the years. Uh, the Atlanta, Georgia area, uh, we pull a lot of student athletes from there, the Mobile, Alabama area. And so it gives us an opportunity now to be more flexible, but also uh, to be aligned with the goals of, of our of some of our individual programs as it relates to their recruiting philosophies as well. Well, we'll end it on that note. A lot of uh, good information uh, given out by you, uh, Dr. Scott. Appreciate the time. Jo- enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, be safe, you and, and your family, and the Southern University Athletic and Southern University family. Be safe. You, you do as well. And, 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 and as I've become accustomed to ending, uh, whenever we have these conversations, I'll give everybody a hearty go jazz again. Uh, we're, we're encouraging everyone, if you're going to go out and, and travel, wear your mask, social distance. Uh, we look forward and, and, and want to uh, have a, a great football season. We look forward to the, the season and as we prepare to move into this new era of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. So, uh, everybody be safe. All right. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Dr. Travian Scott, Deputy Athletic Director and Chief Operating Officer at Southern University. Going to take a quick timeout. When I come back, going to visit with Mo Carter. He's the Sports Director at WZDX Fox 54 in Huntsville, Alabama. He's a Southern University grad, but guess what? Southern now opens the season. With Alabama and them, we'll get his thoughts on that swack expansion and all that good stuff. You're listening to the Cobles Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. As a dad, you'll probably spend years teaching your son how to hit a baseball, how to throw a tight spiral and hit a receiver, how to spring off a diving board and hit the water, how to hit a one wood and a nine iron, how to hit the bullseye. How to hit the strike zone, hit a jump shot, hit the open man, hit the hockey net, and maybe the most challenging of all, how to hit the books. 
But the question is this. How much time will you spend teaching him what not to hit? Teach your son early and often that all violence against women is wrong. For tips on what to say, visit endabuse.org. Brought to you by the Family Violence Prevention Fund, the Waite Institute for Violence Prevention, the Ad Council, and this station. I present to you three of the fiercest subjects ever assembled in the cage of doom. First, the brain-wrenching behemoth, Algebra 2, weighing in at a mind-boggling 800 pounds. Foreign languages! The multilingual international sensation capable of tossing you clear across the Atlantic. And finally, biology. More ferocious than formaldehyde, she'll dissect you one chromosome at a time. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Me too. I'm in. Sign me up. Take on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. Find out which classes you need at knowhowtogo.org. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation for Education, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. What, what is that? That fam you? Let me bring in the guest. Uh, Morel Mo Cardle, WBDX, Fox 54, Huntsville. Mo, good morning to you. Hey, good morning. How's it going, Carlo? Well, I, I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm doing well, you know, doing my best to stay safe in these um, COVID-19 pandemic type times, and also trying to just, you know, keep my head above the water as we get ready for this upcoming year. You know, it's always funny. People always ask me, man, you know, when you're in sports, what do you cover during the summer? Because it seems like nothing's going on, but um, that ain't been the case this summer. But all these um, breaking news things happening, you know, across the board, especially in the swag. Yeah, well, you know, whew, boy, I tell you one thing, that, that was, I think I like Bethune's Cookman uh, music a little better. What do you think, Mom? Uh, <laughs> damn you. Am I trying to start some mess here? <laughs> Man, you probably, look, you probably are or whatever, and I'm just going to just, I'm going to digress to, you know, the next thing that you're going to go ahead and talk about. I'll just say this, man. If fam, you music was playing in the background, I mean, that's cool. As long as I don't have to see the color scheme, I'm fine. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was told, yeah, we we knew you were going to say Southern's uh, fight song is the best because you, you you know you you went to Southern, you graduated from Southern, but you know it it happens just to be, I think, outstanding, but. I digressed. We will now talk uh, sports. <laughs> sports. First and foremost, uh, Mo, I'm sure you have you have your perspectives, your opinion on um, the latest news in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Fam, you first now, but then Cookman. Does this really, from a sports perspective, excite you now, knowing that you have uh, a, a bigger area to cover and then two teams that just are dynamic and, and just this whole situation now you, you've got to be excited about getting a chance to cover these teams no absolutely i think from a sports perspective it's not only exciting but it's going to be exhilarating to add you know the florida schools as they always talk about when you, when you say combinations florida and them and bethune cookman i mean of course, we kind of knew with certain things Courtney Gauthier was saying that fam was probably coming, which whenever they first said it, I'm like, oh, this is going to be perfect. I mean, they're going to easily come into the swag. 
they're going to renew the rivalry, well, continue the rivalry with Southern because I think people tend to forget that, like, Southern and FAM played so many years straight without even being conference opponents or whatever for the longest time ever. And then when they came back and played each other, actually, I was on the Southern football team in which we played them in the MIAC Swag Challenge in 2007. Then they came to us in 2008. Then I remember them playing in Atlanta for two years. We had, like, great crowds. So you think about that rivalry is now going to be a conference game. They, uh, FAMU also has – you know, has history with playing Grambling State. They've got history with playing Alabama State, which will now be their closest opponent in conference, and Alabama A&M from the days of being in the SIAC. So you think about that brand coming to SWAC, it's like, oh, this is a game changer or whatever. I admit I did have some hesitations about the talks with Bethune-Cookman just due to some other factors. And I think Dr. Charles McCullough, our great commissioner, kind of stated it himself, especially with the um, accreditation stuff and the financial things. But I also know that Dr. McClellan, he's a businessman. He is definitely pointing this conference in the right direction. And by doing so, I think he probably saw it as, okay, well, look, if they're getting all their nuts and bolts correct, then it'll be a correct decision to bring them on. So the fact that, yeah, you know, you're bringing these two dynamic schools from the state of Florida into the Southwestern Athletic Conference and you're actually adding Florida's footprint to the conference, I mean, it is a game changer. Everybody's got to be excited for this. And here's another thing, too. Of course, you're adding the Tallahassee, Florida market, and you're also adding, um, you know, a market of Daytona Beach, which technically, from a television standpoint, is part of the Orlando uh, Florida TV market. So that's, you know, that's a lot of uh, eyeballs that you're going to have in addition to whenever these teams are coming to campus. And you got to think at the end of the day, all it's going to do is strengthen the conference, not just in football either. I mean, basketball is going to be solid in baseball. I think baseball is really, really going to be strong with the addition of Fam and Bethune Cookman because I know they've had some strong programs over the last couple of years. Yeah. And when you just even looking at baseball, of course, um, you have if you and it will be divisions. Of course, if you look, you've got Texas Southern over in the West. Um, of course, Prairie View. Uh, you've got Grambling State Southern and Coach Jackson doing doing very well. Um, then you look over in the Eastern Division. Uh, basically, Alabama State and Jackson State have kind of really, in my opinion kind of dominated that side. Now you're going to add FAMU. Um, and by the way, FAMU and Jackson they, and Alabama State, they, they, they have a relationship playing each other. And then adding right. Bethune. Uh, Cookman, boy, baseball, as quiet as it's kept, that is going to be dynamic as well. And as, as you mentioned, basketball. But, boy, I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by baseball. No, absolutely, man. You know, you, you definitely should be. I mean, of course, we've seen what Coach Jackson has done with, with Southern, but, you know, he's had some battles, too, against some strong swag opponents, and now you throw some, you know, mm-hmm. better baseball teams in there with Bethune and Sam. You know I mean? Yeah, it's, it, let's just say this. The swag is going to be battle-tested in the sport of baseball, and when it comes to whoever wins that conference, Man, they're they're going to have a good shot at you know winning a game or two in those uh, NCAA baseball tournaments. I can see that definitely playing out for the future. Yeah, and it'll it'll be interesting to see how they kind of uh, get the schedule, the model together as far as uh, baseball. Because I, I know in football, the commission and 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 all the co- my colleagues have talked about um, it, with football when. Uh, uh, a team from the the other division rotates off, you could kind of still, and, and Dr. Scott even brought it up, you can have one of those teams on your your schedule, not as a conference but a game, but as a non-conference, which, you know, ideally in the past I've not been too fond of that, but I guess I've seen the light. <laughs> you can't turn no, down. I agree with you. You can't turn I'll down a, a mega game. Like, say, for instance, Southern Jackson State. Jack State rotates off of, uh, say, Southern's conference schedule. I would be naive to think that, it, that they won't play every year. 
Yeah, if, if yeah, if Jackson would rotate off a Southern schedule, um, you know, just due to the way scheduling is handled or whatever. I mean, I guarantee you, Roman Banks will be calling Jackson State's athletic director and be like, "Hey, what day do you have as far as an open?" And then we can make some ha- things happen because even though it won't count in the standings, you got to think from a pride standpoint and also from a financial gain that at the end of the day, it's going to turn out to be all positive games. It well, positive gains for those games at the end of the day. Because here's the thing. We want to, we, when I say we, everybody in the SWAC wants to be competitive. Everybody wants to have fun. But at the same time, see, everybody wants to continue to make positive marks financially. And that's one thing I can always say ever since Dr. McClellan has taken over is that you've seen those positive games happen in the financial uh, categories for just about almost every team across the board. And now, with the additions of uh, the Florida schools, you know, you're going to see some more money probably come on through into it. Of course, I know Doc is a visionary, so he's going to try to get everybody on the same level to do this and do that. And then when it talks about bringing things to the table, all he's going to do is just just to try to elevate to that. But, yeah, going back to your point on that, yeah, if you have teams that play each other in conference but are non-conference opponents, I mean, I can see it happening to where it's only going to happen if it, benefits the other person like don't play just to play you're going to be playing because you can see a financial gain and you can also see you know rise in attendance uh who knows depending on who it is you could be like all right let's bring the bands on here we'll do a whole kind of a lot of activities around it so you know it, a lot of good things can come out of that at the end of the day and speaking of good things uh, by the way i'm visiting with my real mo carter uh sports director at wza WZDX 554 in Huntsville. Uh, before uh, we started this segment, we were kind of talking off air um, about who's coming to the West. And you and Dr. Prince had a very interesting theory. And we heard Dr. McClellan talk about some of the ways that they're going to get input on this decision. And, uh, Jennifer Williams will lead that committee, uh, that director of athletics at Alabama State. With that being said, mm-hmm. you guys said Mississippi Valley, you predict, will come to the West. And yeah. your reasoning behind that, I, I, I want to make sure I'm listening crystal clear here. My reasoning behind your prediction Valley coming coming mm-hmm. to the West is more so for partners, you know, for them basically grouping up slash partnering with Arkansas Pine Bluff to kind of reignite that rivalry per se. I mean, I know there's not a lot of distance between those two schools. I mean, you literally could drive to one and come back in the same day along with tailgating and things of that nature. So uh, I remember they actually used to have something several years ago, and I guess it kind of just fell to the wayside with the different ways that the SWAT schedule kind of, uh, you know, came together and stuff. So I think that's going to be it um, ideally. Now, geographically, of course, Alcorn is closer to both Grambling and Southern. But like Dr. McClellan said, I didn't even think about this. It's easier for Jackson to go to Grambling or Southern because of the interstate system. So, I mean, you know, you have like three different variations. I like how that plays if you keep the East and West format. Now, I did see somebody on social media create some North-South format that just looks horrendous at the end of the day. We're not going to get into that. You can probably go, you know, if you get into either RIT or SWAC Sports Central, you'll be able to go find that um, that great North-South SWAC um, idea, which, yeah, I'm, I'm – I'm, I'm putting. I'm saying the word great, but I'm going ahead and put quotation marks um, around the word great on that. But um, yeah, if you keep the East West format, yeah, I, I truly think that Valley will be the one because of the Arkansas Pine Bluff um, combination. But as you've mentioned, Alcorn, you know, not just from a competitive standpoint, but also from the distance wise, would probably make the most sense. But at the end of the day, I'm glad to see that Doc McClellan has already said that. Look. Not only are we looking at this or whatever, we're basically creating a task force and going to get everybody's mm-hmm. input. Can you imagine the amount of input they're going to get between text messages and emails and Facebook messages? This is going to be something, um, you know, driven out 
for a long time. Like, I don't expect them to almost make this decision probably until maybe like the meetings in December, um, you know, the ones that surround like the SWAC championship football game. They probably won't even have the, I guess you could say, the lasting ideas of it around them. Who knows? It may be the spring next year before the action decide to make some, you know, make um, the final, final decision on it. But this is actually going to be a, a long, drawn-out process um, compared to people thinking, oh, it's just going to be something quick, fast, and hurry. Uh, I'm going to get Dr. Prentice's uh, response to the question, but uh, Derek, <laughs> you got me cracking up here, Derek, and listener. He's, a, he's an all Cornite <laughs> in Atlanta. He said, you cannot have Texas Southern UAPB and Valley in the same division, period. As I guess he was imitating Charles Barker. That's terrible. <laughs> I, mean, I, guess he's just, I guess he's talking from a football standpoint well I, I think you have to take not just football but you know in the equation all of the sports teams and I know people have talked about you know more of the basketball travel partners you know that I've seen people talk about that but Dr. Prince yes sir your 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 reason about behind why you believe it it will be Mississippi Valley. Well, if you just go through the natural uh, progression of rivals, okay, uh, let's go with the West, Grambling Southern. That's a natural fit. Prairie View Texas Southern. That's a natural fit. The odd man out in this case is Arkansas Pine Bluff. You go over to the East, a natural fit. Alabama A and M, Alabama State. That's that's a no brainer. Jackson State, Alcorn, that's a no-brainer. And I'm sorry, Mississippi Valley, because of attrition, you're the odd man out. and But you are closer to Pine Bluff. Then you pair that guy up and or what you're going to do, leave them over in the, in the east and then bring over Alcorn and Jackson to the west? You could do that and you still have your balance. Hmm. What about the question of Valley having to travel to Houston. Well, unfortunately, if, if somebody's going somebody's going to have the short stick. Correct. No matter how you slice it up. So, in this case, is it would be Valley. But if you really look at it and I know we talk about the travel when you had Dr. Charles McClellan on, we've created a Bermuda Triangle as far as travel goes for the Southwestern Athletic Conference between Alabama, Texas, and uh Florida. And in all intents and purposes, the easier schools to have the travel on would be uh, the Mississippi, Louisiana schools, because, you know, shoot me, stab me. Either way, I'm six to eight hours. But you're looking at over you're looking at double digit hours when you go from Alabama to Texas, from Texas to Florida, from Florida to Alabama. So someone's going to have to get it. And I know they talked about scheduling, but if I'm in the case of. Uh, with us at Prairie View, and I only have to go to Florida once, but if I have to go to Florida once and then Alabama once in that same year, my travel budget is shot to hell. Hmm. I I could I could go with Alcorn, of course, geographically closer, and uh, the competition thing, oh, don't bring that up to me. <laughs> One and 11. Bring them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you know the interesting thing is, if you're a true competitor, if you're a warrior, you're gonna get better, or else. And by the way, Mo, I think it with all these this good stuff going on. And by the way, I could accept Jackson State coming over, uh, as Dr. McClellan kind of brought up. Boy, if, you know, you gotta tease this thing as much as you can to get participation. Right. Uh, but I think it will also eventually put some pressure on some, some, um, some coaches. I mean, it's always pressure to win and put your students in a position to graduate. We, 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 we know about all that. But, but, but Mo, would you think that after this thing that's settled and, and going forward in a couple of years, I think it's going to put, put it this way. I think it will be imperative that coaches and their staff they do everything they can do to put themselves in a position to be successful because there's going to be some pressure now, some added pressure. Do you agree or do you think I'm just way off base on that? 
No, no, I, I think uh, I think you're on the point of it. I, so I totally agree with you. I think at the end of the day, uh, the added pressure is going to come from the increase of competition. And, you know, if we want to just talk about football, of course, Ugh. you know. Okay, okay well, course, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, you know, like, you know, in, in, in the West, all right, of course, it's, it's top-heavy between Southern and Grambling State going for the West Division title. In the East, man, you're – about to be in a situation where, of course, Alcorn has won all these East Division titles straight. Um, Alabama A&M here in Huntsville with Coach Maynard, they're gaining some, uh, gaining some steam. Don't forget, they were literally one play away from beating Alcorn in Alcorn to possibly represent the East last year had the guy not stepped out of bounds before he caught, you know, caught, the, caught the foul on the last play of the game. So, you know, Coach Maynard and his team, they're gaining some steam. Um, you know, Alabama State, they could possibly be on the up and up. We just remain to see what's going on. Could be Jackson. Now you add FAMU and you add Bethune Cookman, two teams who have been within the top three teams of the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference, they for the past decade coming over to the East. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be a knockdown drag out fight almost each and every week in the East Division you know, with the addition of those. So, yeah, absolutely. The competition is going to be up and up. There's going to be some pressure on some coaches to not only win, but also just be competitive as well because we know FAMU and Bethune, they're coming in here to be contenders. Like, they're not going to sit around and be like, oh, we're going to kind of fill things out for a year or two. No, those dudes are going to try to come in and try to win things in year one, year two. I mean, because they also see the financial game as well. So, Somebody else I saw had tagged me in a post the other day saying with the addition of Sam Yen Bethune, can you imagine what recruiting is going to look like? And yeah. first response basically said it's going to be a knockdown, drag out fight for recruiting just because of the way the footprint is now, especially with you adding the state of Florida. So, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be added pressure to just about every single coach in the entire Southwestern Athletic Conference, especially in the East. And a colleague is listening. Here's what he had to say, and let's see if you agree with this. And I, I said to him, the fist back. Grambling of Southern University has been the West Rep in the SWAC championship 17 times since the inception in 1999. For parity's sake, I would send all corn to the West. I want that smoke. Come on. I, you know what? <laughs> that's what I say. Now, that's just me, and, 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 and I understand some people would love Valor to come – uh, to come over, let me turn my levels down here a little bit. I got excited there, Simo, when, when you talk about that smoke and all corn. That's what I want. No, and I, and I get you. That's I mean, what I want. No, and I, I totally do get you. I mean, of course, you know, the old, what was the old cliche from Ric Flair, if you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. Mm-hmm. Now, now we're talking about sure. football, right, Mo? Because, uh, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, now, so, yeah, other sports, um, they are, uh, oh, my. Not good. <laughs> yeah, you know, other, uh, here's the thing. Like, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to talk about every single other sport or so that's why I'm kind of just kind of just keep it close to football because I know you have time constraints on, you know. For oh, yeah, I got one more guest so. coming up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly with that. So, no, what, what, what I'm saying um, to respond to the person you just said, actually, no, that actually would not be a bad idea if you bring all corn over. I just have my reasoning for Valley. Or whatever, but of course everybody's going to have their reason at the end of the day. But hey, Dr. McClellan, Jennifer Wick, those are going to be the people that make the decision, um, you know, coming up. Yeah, and when that poll comes out, um, a- answer it. Answer it. Uh, how about Let's- this, fellas? If you really want some parity, dissolve divisions and let the top two teams play for the championship. Mm, I've heard that angle. Brought I've up heard before, that especially when it was just Sam. You added. Um, I have to see what the people have to say about that. And, and you know what else that Bethune Cookman brings to the Southwestern Athletic Conference that this has yet been touched. They bring the top athletic budget to the conference at fifteen point one million dollars a year. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So does that guarantee? Them, and I understand they're gonna come in like a boxing match, like uh, Thomas Hearns and Marvis Morgan Hanford, you know, coming out haymakers right out the bat. 
But does it automatically mean that they're going to no. be successful athletically? No, it doesn't mean that because Alcorn, although they've been dominant in one sport, They've been doing it with a seven point one million dollar budget. Now, you know, you just took a shot there. Now you're gonna be on there. there well, it's gonna be all right. It's the truth. It's the truth. So whatever. Um, but what what I'm saying is, Bethune, Fam, you, and you know, this is my battle cry. Being a baseball guy, they've invested money in a sport that I think gives you far better reach than bang for your buck, and that's in baseball. Well, they'll they'll have an opportunity now to come in and do very well, take over. They'll be they'll be in the East. So Jackson State, Coach Omar, Alabama State. You, I'm sure they will be up to the challenge. Don't you think? I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. But I'm just you know, and mm-hmm. and, and for baseball. Forget bringing eight and ten teams to the tournament, man. Take the top three out of each division, give you two top seeds a bye, and let them play a two out of three series all the way through the championship. Well, the, that is something that I'm sure. And again, I didn't get into maybe tomorrow night at six p.m. Central Standard Time. You can ask them about the baseball championships, the format, because that's going to be very interesting. And I, I'll make sure I ask them the next time I talk with them. But that is a very interesting situation. Six teams. Yeah, well, I'm gonna start playing around with four, but I know that ain't gonna happen now. And you got twelve. Uh, <laughs> you got twelve teams. But um, will it be cut from eight downward? We shall see. We shall see. Last but not least, Mr. Carter. Yeah. Southern Alabama A&M, now with Southern's revised schedule, going to play at Alabama A&M. Wow. This, this 2020 season, can, can we just fast forward? Can we just click our heels like Dorothy did and, and now fast forward to 2021? Man, I've, I've been asking myself that many times, all things considered. All things ahead, considered. But um, yeah, I, yeah. The way 2020 has been going, shoot, COVID 19 and everything else that's come along with it is definitely has been crazy. But I'm pretty sure you're about to allude to my thoughts on you know Southern dropping the first two games, but then have to play Alabama and them. Like um, my colleague um, Dr. Trey and Scott said earlier, you know you got to understand that you have to do the best for what um, you have to do what's best for what for people's health, and of course we know. Detroit, heavily half, heavily populated African American um, city. You know they're dealing with the same thing that the city of New Orleans is dealing with, with the high numbers and whatnot. And then with the Fam U game, of course, man, there was going to be a slew of people that was going to be on the yard for that one. But considering that you can't technically social distance, hey, you know you you got to make those decisions of that nature for the best or whatever. But I feel like this: something's going to be enough. Half glass empty, half glass full scenario when they actually open their season against Alabama A and M. If they can't get another opponent before that, um, first reason I'll say is this: is that remember they're going to be so hungry to play against somebody else and hit somebody else in a different jersey color and whatnot, and they're going to have the tape of two games already for Alabama A and M because uh, they play Stephen F. Austin in week one and they play UAB in week two. So they already have that game film from what Alabama A and M has already done on the field. But you also have to look at the other side of things because Southern has not played two weeks worth of games. You're going to be looking at a scenario where those guys are still going to try to be getting things, uh, getting things together game-wise, chemistry-wise, in the first game against an opponent that you can't, that you – you know, came down to the wire last year playing up against, and they, were, and they returned a lot of starters, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. So, you know, it's definitely going to be a challenge for Coach Odin and them to come up here and basically have that as their first game. And it's also a conference game, so it's not like you get that mulligan. It's like, no, if you win, you're up in the conference standings. If you lose, well, guess what? You, you got some playing up to do in that standpoint. But I can also say the same thing for Alabama a and they're going to be wet behind the ears and be feeling good knowing that, okay, we got two games on our belt. Now we're going to play a team whose chemistry isn't on point or whatever. But 
are the same thing because we know how attrition and injuries and stuff go. Let's say something happens in those first two games and all of a sudden it's like, all right, we can kind of be back in our way into this game against Southern. So, like I said, it's glad to have empty half full on that one. I, you know, um, personally, I, you know, I'll be happy to see the Jaguars come through and whatnot. As a matter of fact, the Huntsville – uh, Alumni Association for some Southern University, which I'm a part of here in Huntsville, we actually had put together some plans to host something for the people coming from out of town, but it kind of looks like it's going to go by the wayside due to limited this and yeah. limited that and whatnot. But remember, you have to understand how these things work out, and you have to do it for uh, the best. But uh, yeah, Carlos, I, I think it. I, mean, I think honestly, it could go either way. I actually talked to Coach Maynard two weeks ago, and he said, you know, they're preparing to try to bring their kids back on campus somewhere mid to late July, and they're preparing to have Stephen F. Austin um, week one on the hill, you know, in, in, in the game against um, a really good Southland Conference team. And, you know, they're trying to go 1-0 and each and every week. Well, it's going to be more uncertainty, ever-changing plans. Mo? Appreciate the time yep. as always. Enjoy your, the rest of your weekend and be safe, you and yours. Please do. Definitely will do. Um, you and Mike also take care. I always appreciate you guys bringing me on. Um, I guess the next time we'll talk will be for that virtual SWAT media day that could be coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's correct. Well, appreciate it. We will talk again real soon. Sounds good. Have a great weekend, gentlemen. All righty. That was Morell Mo Carter, sports director at WZDX, Fox 54 in Huntsville, Alabama. We're going to take a quick, quick timeout. The rest of the show will give them those minutes to Charles Etman of the uh, Alcorn State Radio Network. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show. Be the one with courage to fight child abuse. All Texans must find the courage to fight child abuse. Learn the signs and symptoms and report suspected abuse to appropriate authorities. Learn and know these warning signs. A child who undergoes changes in behavior, appetite, or routine. Watch for unexplained injuries, a change in academic performance, or loss of interest by a child in regular activities. Trust your instincts. If you suspect something, do something. If you believe a child is in an abusive situation, please call the Texas Abuse Hotline at 1-800-252-5400. Be the one with courage. To find your local children's advocacy center, visit onewithcourage.org. On behalf of children, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, hustle, 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 hustle. Get your head in the game. Come on. Are you setting the right example for your kids? You need to get some confidence. Before your child's next game, ask yourself, how would you like it if they copied your behavior? Ad revenue has declined 10, I mean, uh, 15%. Come on. You need to get some confidence. Positive Coaching Alliance has valuable tips and tools to help our kids perform their best while keeping sports enjoyable for everyone. Positive Coaching Alliance. Creating better athletes, better people. This week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show, the final segment of today's show, and I'm going to visit with Charles Edmond of the Alcorn State uh, Radio Network. Charles, good morning. Good morning, uh, Carlos and Clayton Law Firm. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie Clayton was a uh, guest last week, and I've heard from a lot of people it was terrific. <laughs> Nostalgia, <laughs> bringing back the old times, and we even got a few little jabs in. But um, you know, Charles, sometimes uh, uh, just a a brawl would break out between me and him on the air. I think Carlos on a dead Saturday, and there's not going to be too many of us. You need to explain the relationship between you and Tony Clayton. You know, on Facebook they've got relationship statuses, married, single, whatever. And on some of these profiles, it says it's complicated. I think the relationship between you and Tony Clayton 
it's complicated. And I think you need to take the time to explain it. Because I've been there. I've been in the middle of those tug of wars at Piggly Wiggly and Baton Rouge and doing those remotes when you had your show on other stations. And I tell you what, he, and for those who might not know, Tony Clayton brings out the best and worse in Carlos Brown. <laughs> and Carlos Brown brings out the best and worse in Tony Clayton. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> Yeah, and and actually he said something last week that normally, and I think he he threw out some bait there, but normally I I, <laughs> I would have just went off, but uh, I didn't. I didn't take the bait as much, but there's more to come. And, and speaking of that, well, he mentioned something about Coach Richardson. Let me do this quickly. Um, Mrs. Lillian Richard, Coach Pete Richardson's wife. Uh, passed away June 19th, I, and yep. I was shocked. I didn't know, and someone pointed it out to me on social media. So did a little investigating, and uh, wow, what a sweet person. Um, behind the scenes with Coach Richardson, but behind every great man is a great woman. You've heard that cliche. Yes. But that, that was just shocking, and it, it just, once again, put things in perspective. Yes, it did. Yeah, I, I want to say that because Coach Richardson is still an iconic figure in this conference. Speaking of this conference, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left here. So, Charles, Bethune, Cookman, fam, you, I, I know we communicated. You had some concerns uh, like many, many others out there, but hopefully Dr. McCullough today kind of uh, – Quiet those fears for for the majority of the fan base. But your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously Florida A and M uh, coming into the conference. I mean, that obviously thumbs up all the way around. Uh, but Phil Cookman, I the only issue, and uh, I didn't get a chance to hear your interview with Dr. McClellan about the Phil Cookman in the past. They'd had some financial issues, whether it be at athletics, academics, or both. Um, I think from a location standpoint, Daytona Beach has been down there. So it's a pretty good haul in terms of travel. But my only issue is financially the issues that they've had. If they if they got past that, then uh, I think it I think it'll be okay. Uh, it's just a matter of you know where they are from the financial component of it. Um, it's interesting that they decided to leave you know the MEAC, but obviously they see the grass is green on the other side and. Hey, they see the Miac kind of coming apart at the seams, so they want to get in where they fit in, and obviously they fit in the slack. Yeah, he he addressed it. Um, you can go back and listen to it at your leisure. Um, he did address that, and, and and basically he was like, you know, we we did our homework. Come out the conference, right. we uh, we we looked at certain situations, and it met our approval. And um, I think Doctor Prince mentioned. Uh, and this hour, maybe the last hour, he was talking about their their budget as far as coming to the conference. They'd be what in the top top three? Okay, well I said in the top three, yeah. Um, and so from uh, travel concerns, financial, I, I did <laughs> ask the question <laughs> with Doctor McClellan. So uh, other than that, just kind of looking at the possibilities as far as from a competitive standpoint, uh, football, basketball, baseball, and, 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 and even the Olympic sports, as Dr. McClellan talked about, have been very competitive. And, and Charles, this, this blueprint from the television side, you're looking at, um, you know, going from Texas to, to, to Florida. So I, I see more positives than concerns. Yeah, I mean, it, since he did address those concerns, and I and we all know that schools are vetted when they join conferences, whatever conference they're supposedly are going to join. You know, there's vetting on both sides. So, I mean, Dr. McClellan's a finance guy. He, he knows finances. He's got background in it. So I'm sure the president and himself did the homework. And if it passed, if it passed that test, then we're ready to go. Personally, for me, that was my only concern about Bethune Cookman. I think a good market over there at Daytona. You've also got uh, Tallahassee. So from Florida to Texas, as you mentioned, and all states in between, hey, the SWAC's going to have a, a great presence. And uh, we'll see what these divisions look like in terms of football. I, I caught the tail end of your last segment there 
in terms of uh, who from the East is going to join the West. Jump into that. that. Tell me who you think is going to move. I think it's going to be Alcorn. Uh, And I think just from a geographic standpoint, it it makes the most sense. I know you and I have texted the last few days. I mean, Jackson State, to me, geographically is too far east to go west. I think Mississippi Valley is too far north to go west. And if you just look at the distance, I mean, I've obviously been to all these SWAC schools from our campus, two-and-a-half-hour bus ride to Baton Rouge, two-and-a-half bus ride to uh, Grambling, a four-and-a-half-hour bus ride to Pine Bluff, of course, we're assuming if we join the west. Six-hour bus ride, seven hours to Houston. Makes sense. Jackson State's a little bit further. Mississippi Valley a lot further in terms of Houston. Now, their closest would be, obviously, UAPB, but I think it makes sense. It's been talked about many, 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 many years ago when when the talk of if the East and West ever, if there were another team, who would go? It's going to be one of the three Mississippi schools. There's no question about it. Uh, I did see the uh, interview that you sent me. Commissioner said he's going to have some fun with it, let the fans get involved with it. I get all that. But I think at the end of the day, I mean, of course, I don't know. I don't have any inside knowledge, in my opinion. If you just look at the mileage and the geographics, I think Alcorn makes the most sense. I mean, in terms of how close we are distance-wise to the other schools on the western side. So to me, it makes sense. But you know, I'm not the one making the decisions. We'll we'll see how that plays out. Well, a listener there says if you're going to brag on what family and Bethune brings in budget and sports, moving Alcorn over Valley is the only way to balance all sports, not just football. I think Darius a little animated about that one. <laughs> but but you, who was but bragging you know, on it, budgets? Was nobody bragging on no budgets? We were stating mm-hmm. facts. The fact yeah, is, Derek is animated. I love it. I love it because um, I said all corn from more of a. Well, that was the logical choice. That was the logical choice, all corn, because of distance wise. But and competitive. Well, I understand that too. But what are you talking about mm-hmm. bragging on budgets on what they bring? I mean, it's just a state of the fact. Um, well, I think I, Derek, I, I, if I you want to answer that one, you, you we have four minutes left. Go ahead, Charles. Oh, I was just saying from a budgetary standpoint, I think in this conference, it it, it even though the, the dollars are what they are, I mean, we clearly see that it, the budgets don't necessarily reflect championships. I mean, yes, yes, Southern, yes, Bama State, yes, Grambling, yes, Texas Southern, yes, Bethune Cookman, yes, Florida and m have great budgets, and we'll see if that reflects getting the talent that you need to compete and win championships in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. doesn't necessarily reflect that. Yes, it looks good, it sounds good, it seems good, but does that always reflect championships across the board in all sports in this conference. And that was and my whole is, state. That, I said all the corn been doing no. it with, with, with a far less budget. And, but all we just corn st- has the second lowest athletic budget in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Absolutely. We the broke second it or third lowest. The second yes. lowest. They, they have $7.1 yes. $1 million. Valley has $4.1 million. And if anything, the underachievers were those who had the biggest budgets. But I was just saying what they spent and were committed to and referencing to the fact because they rep- had that much in their budget, they've done well in baseball and other sports that this conference, for the most part, does not invest in. And I looked at it from a baseball perspective. That was my whole point. Yeah, I want to see what happens when 2021 comes and 2022, because we're, we're, yeah, we're giving facts in some cases, opinions in others, but the proof is going to be on that field. Right. And, and if, if Omar, and I'm calling out Omar, if Omar Jack State and Alabama State, bring it. Coach Jackson, bring it at Southern. Because when they He's come into the conference, you what are you going to do? You're going to be competitive. Competition. That's what I look for. And Charles, I'm not I, scared I, of all corn either. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm <laughs> Football. Yeah, but I will you, say all corn, uh, some of the fans I've talked to, they they realize that they want to they want to be dominant and and more than just football. Right. 
Right. And I, I agree with that. And I think that, you know, based on what we've got, our new coaches that we have in basketball, I think we will. And um, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, getting the players, getting the talent. And when you talk about budgets, if you have good coaches in place, they can they can make it happen. I mean, we've seen a school like Mississippi Valley, coached by Sean Woods in the past. You saw what he did at Valley. Um, so, I mean, not calling out any school in terms of budget or lack thereof. I mean, it is, as they say, it is what it is. They're doing the best that they can with what we're all doing the best that we can with what we got. And uh, if you get the talent, you get the coaching, and you put all that together the right way, you will win. And we've seen that in this conference. Hashtag competition. That's what I'm looking for. I'll leave, I'll leave the other stuff to you, Charles. <laughs> On that note, we're literally out of time. We will talk again soon. Have a great weekend. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Be safe. All right. Thanks to Dr. Charles McClellan for joining us today. Dr. Travian Scott, Morell Mo Carter, Charles Edmond. Uh, thanks to Dr. Prince for uh, producer extraordinaire today. Make sure everyone you tune in next Saturday at 10 a.m. for another edition of the Carlos Brown Show. Always heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Be safe. Please be safe. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And until next time, as always, peace and God bless.